Okay, so um, hi, it's Carl again. Um, if you watched any of the other the other videos, then you'll know that um, I do uh, the illustrations and the words for British Wildlife Tales books. And um, I've been asked a few times, what um, what's it all about? So uh, here it is. What's the point? British Wildlife Tales. What's the point? So let me uh, let me just tell you that um, the British Wildlife Tales started. Uh, with a vision of um, a very simple vision between father and children um, where I wanted to help my children learn about the birds and the animals in our garden and um, so what I did I started drawing very simple little pictures to help them to identify the birds in the garden because being able to name what you see I believe is quite an important part of um, instilling that natural interest uh, and just developing a, uh, a respect in the, uh, in the natural world. And uh, now when I'm out on a walk or uh, if I'm uh, out in the car even, or even just sitting in a, in a park or in a, in a city centre, because of what I was taught when I was very young, um, I seem to be tuned in. So um, I'm no expert by any stretch of the, uh, the imagination. I learn as I go along. But uh, I just wanted to, to have that, to help my children just nurture that natural inquisi um, uh, inquisitiveness and to, uh, I don't know, just to foster the same kind of Same kind of um, intrigue that I have in the in the natural world. So now, when I'm walking through a park, as, as I was going to, about to say, if I hear a bird, I can actually identify most of them, most of the birds in the UK, uh, just by just by hearing their call, and it adds so much to my experience of being in the outdoors, looking down and seeing a a flower or a Oh dear, excuse me. Um, a flower or perhaps a, 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 fr a frog or a reptile of some sort, and I can identify the bird, <laughs> identify the creature. And um, it really, really adds to, to my enjoyment of being outside and being with other people. And I can share that knowledge with other people too. So it's not just a vast expanse of pretty flowers. It's a, a crane's bill or a tufted vetch or... Um, perhaps a pyramidal orchid or a daisy. But what type of daisy? A dog daisy, uh, an oxide daisy. You know, just uh, there's a, a wealth of different creatures out there. 57 different types of butterfly, two and a half thousand different species of moth, about 300 different species of British bird or birds that come to Britain regularly. Um, plants and fungi and mushrooms and all that thing. And I just love 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 learning about those kinds of things so that's where british wildlife tale started i wrote the first book uh, i'll get you a copy of it here the birds at the bottom of the garden it was a very very basic um, book with uh, a little bit of rhyming um, poetry telling children about the types of birds they might find in and around their garden You see, got the dunnock, got the starling, and the you know the um, the books took on a, a kind of a bit of a, a bit of momentum, and quite a lot of my friends quite liked them, and they wanted a copy for their children, so they bought a few copies, and eventually I sold. A a couple of hundred copies and I never really did anything with it until about you know a year or two ago when I started advertising them and and they became really really popular and these these books this series of books have sold you know the best part of 18,000 copies and probably 20,000 now I don't know last time I checked it was 18,000 it was a couple of months ago so we sell several hundred copies uh, a month um here at British Wildlife Tales but it, it led me on to um to doing more and more books. So 
We've got the birds down the lane. There's a kestrel. Uh, there are some notes in the back of the book. <laughs> My terrible drawings of people. Um, but some notes in the back of the book to help parents to learn about British wildlife and or to in, encourage their children. So this is flipped around a little bit. So it's help your mummies and daddies how to get your parents to take you outdoors. It's sometimes quite hard to get parents outside. They're so busy doing stuff that keeps them inside. So pick up your toys and tidy your room and then they will find there is much less to do. No more packing away, no more clearing the floors and more time to go out in the great wild outdoors. So the book's designed to encourage children to help their parents get them into the outdoors. And then I go on and I um, put in here how to watch for the birds down the lane. And this is just a little bit of advice as to, but it's rhyming, it's all rhyming. I did it because it was a bit more catchy that way. Uh, how to watch for the birds down the lane. The first things you need are two beady eyes. You'll use them to search through the trees and the skies. The next thing you'll need are your left and right ear. No, that's the other way around, left and right ear. <laughs> when the birds start to sing, these will help you to hear. Then a pen and a pad will help you take notes. And the last thing you'll need is a hat and a coat. And there's a checklist in the back of all of the books so you can tick off the birds that you've seen. And here we go, look, which of the birds down the lane have you seen? And then we went into uh, doing things like what's in the woodpile. That, uh, I got the title for that from a, a friend of mine. Uh, he suggested it might be a good idea to do something about the, um, the creatures that might live in the woodpile. So we've got a woodlouse there. Lift up the bark, stay as quiet as a mouse. If we're lucky, we'll find a curled up woodlouse with her shell like a ball and 14 gray legs tucked under her tummy. She keeps 24 eggs, which she'll guard with her life in her safe hiding patch for just a few days until they start to hatch. And we've got a millipede there. We've got a, a ground beetle, that's a violet ground beetle garden snail, all the sorts of things that you might find. And each one of them has got the uh, the rhyme that goes with it. Here's a slow worm. There's an old piece of board by the side of the shed. Mummy says, I know a creature that uses this as its bed. Under a board on the moist, cool brown soil, a slow worm is snoozing in a neatly curled coil. It has smooth bronzy skin and a teeny forked tongue and each morning warms up in the heat of the sun. Got a grumpy toad. Got an earwig. All of the, um, the sort of insects here. So we've got 10 species in each of our books, and they're each designed to be very simple and very likely for children to be able to find in the outdoors. Uh, with one exception, this, this book um, is called What's That Coming Over the Hill? And it's about animals that live. I'm hiding behind this book because I'm yawning. I'm very, very tired today. Um, so this book um, is about the creatures that you might find up in the hills where the winds blow strong. And there are lots of very spe special creatures for you to discover up there. Um, and you can join the little one and their family on a camping trip when they head into the mountains to find out what that is coming over the hill. Now... In this book, we've got creatures like the red deer, we've got the raven, we've got the ring oozel, which is a kind of thrush, we've got the wheat ear, that's a visitor from overseas, comes up from Sub Sahara, uh, we've got the hen harrier. And that's that's a, a quite a rare bird these days to see. Certainly, a very rare breeding bird in the UK. They are uh, it's possible to see them, but you do need to go into the high mountains and the moors. Not the high mountains, the moors um, and the glens 
of Scotland, really, if you're going to have chance of, uh, of finding a uh, finding a hen harrier. Let's read that one for you, shall we? Down below and in the glen, a ghostly bird sweeps by, then rockets up toward the sun to dance up in the sky. Its feathers are both grey and white with fantastic black-tipped wings. It makes a cheeky, chuckling sound and hardly ever sings. Dad says it's a hen harrier. Let's watch him swoop and dive. I think that he could be really be the most amazing bird alive. And then we've got the, the mountain hare and, and things like that, you know, the red grouse, all sorts of things that you're going to find if you go looking in the hills, being very careful with your family. Um, you might actually be lucky enough to find these. And in the back again of this book, we've got how to get up into the hills. You'll need, you'll need good shoes, a rainproof coat, a jumper and a map. Add food and drink, a compass too. Don't forget a nice warm hat. Plan your route or take a guide. Make sure you don't get lost. Down in the glen it might be hot, but up there high, there could be frost. Ask mum or dad to take a tent in case there is a storm. So you can stop and take some shelter where it's cosy and it's warm. And again in the back, we've got a, a tick list. So what I'd really, really like is for every single grown up, all of the adults, um, all of the adults in the the world, anyone that has an influence over children, just to enthuse them, to take care and not to um, abuse the wildlife that we've got in our, in our country. And hopefully that's what I've managed to instill into my children. They don't like um, any kind of cruelty to animals, really. They don't like um, destroying habitats of animals. And that's what I'd really like to, to get across. I'd like to leave a, a legacy uh, and just spread a love to all of you, anyone that's watching this video and any of my illustration workshops, any of you, I'd just really love to share my passion of loving wildlife and loving being in, in the outdoors in its natural state, uh, not messed about with too much by humans. Sometimes we can improve the landscape for the, wild, for the wildlife. Um, but we shouldn't be doing too much meddling, but we mustn't be destroying habitat. And this is what I find to be so important. So one of the things that we've got, um, we've got going on uh, here at British Wildlife Tales, uh, and I'll go and get the, uh, um, I'll go and get my jumper, is... is the Project Relieve initiative. So I'm just getting this jumper on because it's one of the um, things we're doing to try and raise some funds to help protect and rewild. There we go, this is the Daisy brand from Project Relieve. So we've got the Project Relieve logo. If you look up Project Relieve, you'll um, you'll find out a little bit more about the um, about the concept and we've got a, a website which uh, isn't live yet but it's uh, in the making uh, the plan is to use any profits that we get um, in excess of what I need to uh, to live my life I'm a fairly modest human being so I don't tend to uh, overspend on uh, lavish things but um, so any surplus that, uh, that we generate, uh, we want to put back into Project Relieve. And what Project Relieve will ultimately do is buy large areas of the landscape, uh, starting perhaps with small woods, um, small bits of land which have been overused and um, aren't any good for farming. They've been overexploited. And we want to convert them into good quality natural habitats. So really to allow nature to get back in charge um, and we'll give it a helping hand, you know, if we can. Um, but ultimately, what we need to do is we need to buy the land first. So we need to find old shooting estates, shooting woods, um, unproductive farmland, wasteland, pockets of land in city centres even, uh, which uh, have no 
uh, commercial land value in them. Uh, and we want to turn it back and give it back to nature. So if you can help that, um, you know, buying one of these books, that'll help because, uh, you know, anytime we get extra profits, so we're going to put that into uh, Project Relief. Uh, it's not an official charity yet, but it will be in due course. Uh, we've got a, a chartered environmentalist uh, on, on side. We've got um, uh, a finance lead already. I'm kind of the vision, uh, the, the visionary. God, that's a bit pompous, isn't it? I'm kind of the guy behind it, the person who came up with it, the founder, uh, came up with the idea. It's, you know, it's been done before by other people. Um, but the more people that do this sort of thing, the better. And what you'll get is you'll get a range of different habitats, a range of different ways of, of giving nature back its land. So um, what we um, we find, what we think here, um, something that's really, really important is that it's any land that we do acquire and we do give back to nature, we meet, make sure that we include humanity in that nature. Uh, in, in the definition of nature, because we are all animals too. And we have a need to um, to experience the landscape uh, in a safe and, uh, and non-destructive way. So um, the, the vision is to, to have this landscape, uh, to, to purchase this land, give it back to nature, but then also just allow gentle access, um, uh, free where possible. We don't want to have to charge, um, but we want to hold events um, that are uh, respectful of the local area, of the local landscape, and will help to infuse and educate people and get them connected with nature so that they can give a, um, uh, a bit more of their time and um, presence to, to the great outdoors. And that's something I hold very, very close to my heart. So um, Project Relief, uh, if you go to the British Wildlife Tales website, britishwildlifetales.co.uk, I think if you click on the channel, uh, either up here or up here, you'll, um, you'll see the links in the, um, in the details. But, um, yeah, the important thing is that, um, that what we do is we try and raise these funds and use them very, very wisely. We don't let them get squandered on admin and, you know, technology and equipment and things like that. We want to make sure that we use it all for the benefit of nature. It's not going to be possible to use every penny, but a good percentage of it. OK. Um, and by purchasing a, a T-shirt or a, a jumper or one of our books, um, uh, we, we have got these little head scarves here look you know the um, we can use these as face coverings when you're doing your shopping Just pop this over my head there we go you can go oh it's upside down never mind you get the gist they're not all upside down i don't think look there we go there's a big toad there <laughs> you'll have seen him in the book anyway there um the idea is by enthusing you guys to encourage your children uh, to take an interest in nature, if you're not doing already, or to nurture that uh, respect for nature that they've already got because of you, um, you can do that using these books. Um, you can do it by taking them outside, forget the books, just take them outside, allowing them to get dirty and picking things up, um, you know, poking around in poo with sticks and having a look at what's inside it. Uh, not dog poo, probably not uh, not the best thing to go for, but anything that looks a bit unusual, pick it up um, safely and uh, smell it, touch it, feel it. Don't taste it unless you know exactly what it is. Um, if you're a child watching this, never taste anything. Make sure your parents do that. But yeah, that's, um, that's me rambling on. That's why British Wildlife Tales. That's a whole big circle around what British Wildlife Tales is all about and um, why it even exists in the first place. So thanks again for your time. Um, please do uh, drop by and see one of our workshops, our British um, Wildlife Tales live illustration workshops designed for kids, but suitable for any age. You know, we've got grown-ups doing it on their own and all that sort of stuff. So um, feel free to join in every Tuesday at 2 p.m. on this channel. Uh, and I'll be here and uh, I'll be hopefully leading you through a bunch of illustrations throughout the year and beyond. We've done probably about 35 to 40 of these workshops already, and we, we intend to do a good 
good few hundred more. Um, I don't doubt that we'll repeat some of the species uh, that we've, we've enjoyed doing in the past. But that's it for me. Uh, www.britishwildlifetales.co.uk Please click like on this video. Please subscribe to the channel uh, because then you'll get the notifications when we go live every Tuesday uh, and you'll get a notification when I'm doing a live like this, for example. Um, I probably will do readings. I'll probably do readings of my book um, from start to finish, uh, perhaps once or twice a week. So um, feel free to drop by for them. They may be, um, what's the word, sporadic, spontaneous, spontaneous. But um, I'll try and schedule something in. Uh, anyway, that's it for now. I'll stop rambling. Enjoy your afternoons. Thanks so much. Big love. Take care.